when you think about a Super Bowl game and, and, and nightlife, like not the game itself, people coming in town, you don't want to have to be bundled up, freezing cold. You want to be in shorts and T-shirts. And L.A., this time of year, Super Bowl, and when they, when they have the Super Bowl in February, it'll be probably 70 degrees. I mean, so how can you beat that weather? What's going on, guys? This is Brian Jones from PopCoach.com. And joining me today is one of the NFL's all-time greats. He's a six-time Pro Bowler, five-time All-Pro selection, led the NFL in rushing four times, also a member of the 1980s All-Decade Team and the NFL's 100th anniversary All-Time Team Pro Football Hall of Fame running back, Eric Dickerson. Eric, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm good, Brian. How you doing? Ah, uh, Good, man. Uh, thank you so much again. But um, I want to start off with this first. You're working with the Los Angeles Tourism and Convention Board to, to promote Los Angeles as a top destination. Now, you played in Los Angeles for five years in your career with the Rams. What makes Los Angeles such a great city? Man, L.A. is a fantastic city. Yeah. First of all, there's so much to do here. I mean, you got the – and this, let's go with sports first. You got the Lakers. You got the Dodgers. You got the Rams. You got uh, the the – Angels just right up the streets. You've got the Clippers. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a great city. And then, you know, you've got the restaurants. You've got the beach. You've got the mountains. You've got the desert. <laughs> you can go surfing. You can go snowboarding. You, I mean, you can do it all here. That, that's, that's what makes L.A. Such a, such a great city. I mean, you've got the restaurants. I mean, that's why I made L.A. my home, really. I mean, I, I played here, and I never left. I mean, I'm from Texas, but I love L.A. so much because if you look at the backdrop behind me. I mean, if you're in the Midwest or in the East somewhere, it's, it's 81 degrees here today. It's not going to be 81 out there. So mm -hmm. I, just, I just love L.A. Um, yeah, never a dull moment in Los Angeles. And one of the things um, Los Angeles is getting really soon is the Super Bowl coming back for the first time since 1993. How excited is the Los Angeles community getting the Super Bowl back? Oh, they're very excited. You know, I think I think they're more excited because we have a team that could possibly be in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most exciting thing, the way the Rams are playing. I mean, I got to give... Um, Les Snead and Stan Kroenke credit, you know, Kevin Demoff. They've done a great job of putting this team together uh, over the last couple of years. Even this year, you know, acquiring Matt Stafford, Von, getting Von, getting them, making a trade for Von Miller. I mean, they're doing all the all the right things. I mean, people always say, you know, you, you get a team to, for down the future, down in the, for the future. This team is built for right now, and, and that's football is a team is a, is a sport that they want you to win right now, not four or five years from now because you never know what will happen. But you know, this football team right now. Looks very good on paper. They're playing very good, seven and one. So um, we hope to have a, our football team here in the Super Bowl and our stadium is SoFi Stadium. If you've never seen the stadium, it's second to none. When you walk in, I guarantee you, you'll go, wow. And because of that, with SoFi Stadium being the stadium, a stadium, state of the art facility, uh, do you see Los Angeles getting into that? back into that rotation of Super Bowls because you obviously have New Orleans and Miami. They seem to host it every four or five years or so. You think Los Angeles will get back into that rotation of hosting Super Bowls? Oh, for sure. <laughs> That's a no-brainer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but not just because of the because of the stadium for sure, but look, when you when you think about a Super Bowl game and, and, and nightlife, like not the game itself, people coming in town, you don't want to have to be bundled up, freezing cold. You want to be in shorts and T-shirts. And L.A., this time of year, Super Bowl, and when they, when they have the Super Bowl in February, it'll be probably 70 degrees. I mean, so how can you beat that weather? And on top of that, you have a beautiful venue to play the game in. Not, not a, like a second-class citizen, but when I say top-notch, nothing like it. It's nothing like SoFi Stadium that you've ever seen if you've never seen the stadium. Of course. And other than the Super Bowl, Los Angeles is going to get uh, some pretty big sporting events. Um, you talk about the U.S. Open, the College Football Playoff National Championship, uh, the MLB All-Star Game, which will be in Los Angeles next year. And in 2028, the Summer Olympics are coming back to L.A. It, it seems like 2020 is a probably one of the best decades for Los Angeles in terms of host, hosting uh, sporting events. Do you agree with that? Do you think this is probably the decade for Los Angeles when it comes to sporting events? I, I, I do agree with that. And, and I think I think it starts because one reason we have a football team back in town. I mean, football, yeah. I mean, is, is it. I just put it, that that is the main sport. We have a football team. But we have a very successful football team. Now we have two teams in town. We have the L.A. Chargers in town also. And like I said, you have the Dodgers, you have the Lakers. Uh, L.A. is a, a, a place where, you know, you want to come. You, you want to come here to, to watch a sporting event because, you know, not just because of the stadiums. You've never mm -hmm. seen the stadium, but 
if you've never been to the city of Los Angeles, just to experience Los Angeles, you know, the hotels, the restaurants, things to do. It's so much to do. It's, it's not always about sports, but it's just so much to do. here. And, and then sports makes it that much better. You have something else to do other than say, oh, I'm going to go to the beach today. You know what? Let's go to the Ram game tomorrow night. Or, you know, let's go to the Laker game. Let's go to the Dodger game. That makes it that much better. And you mentioned the Rams uh, and what they've done with their or what they've done over the past couple of years. You know, they went to the Super Bowl not too long ago. They recently traded for Von Miller, as you mentioned. Um, you know, before the season, I thought the Rams would be back in the Super Bowl because of what they've done, specifically last year. And you pretty much said they're on paper probably the best team in the NFL. Do you think there's a team right now that could challenge the Rams? Because I don't think there is. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, there's some good teams out there. You know what? One thing about football is that sometimes the best team doesn't always win. It depends yeah. on how healthy you are, you know, uh, the game plan. Sometimes if you turn, obviously, if you turn the football over, that can hurt you. Uh, but on paper, we're a very good football team. And like I said earlier, Sean McVay said to me before the season started, he said, this is one of the best football teams I've ever had. Uh, and I believe that as a coach, because, you know, when you added Matt Stafford, that was just a plus to me. We, to me, that was the position that I thought we were lacking in. And not mm -hmm. Jared Goff did a good job, but I just kept saying he's not the guy that we need to run this football team. And I think Matt Stafford, no, I think I know Matt Stafford is the guy that can run McVay's offense because you have a coach that's a brilliant football coach, a, br a brilliant football mind, and you want to run your offense. And you don't want to have to tailor your offense back because somebody can't run it. I mean, I don't care if it was me. If I was, if I, if I couldn't run the offense, if I, if I couldn't do it, then so be it. But I think now he has the guy, he has a team in place that he wants to have in place. And the big thing is, is that you got to stay healthy. And it's, you know, it's, there's no remedy to that. There's no remedy to it. But if you can, you got to stay as healthy as you possibly can. Absolutely. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in these next uh, nine to 10 weeks. But when you played with the Rams back in the eighties, you had some memorable moments playing in Los Angeles Coliseum. Um, do you have a favorite memory while playing in the LA Coliseum? Well, I didn't play in the Coliseum with the Rams. We, we oh. were in Anaheim. People think that we were, we were in Anaheim. Yeah. But, you know, but, but, but I can't, you know, I yeah. came to the Coliseum. See, I got recruited by USC and I still remember it. I remember sitting right down here, like on the 35 yard line. Yeah. Every time I come to kind of look, look in that area where I sit there with, with my, with my, the guy who recruited me, coach John Jackson, and watching the USC Trojans play the, the Michigan Wolverines. You know, I think they played for the national championship. I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. And also meeting OJ Simpson uh, the day before. I mean, those are, to me, those are like, those are memories that really stuck out in my mind. Absolutely. And, um, you know, going back to your NFL career, you uh, still hold the single season uh, NFL rushing record. Um, and there are a couple of running backs that have gotten close to it, whether it's Adrian Peterson or Jamal Lewis with the way that the NFL is going right now in terms of uh, running backs and not getting as many carries uh, as you see running backs in the past. Do you think there will be a running back that breaks your record? Someone could possibly break that record. I mean, Derrick Henry had a shot at it. Adrian Peterson yeah. had a shot at it. I mean, when you look at, um, Derrick Henry, even this year, I mean, they ran the ball a lot. They, they, were, they were the old school team, old school running football team. I hate to see Derrick get hurt. You know, people ask me about the record. I said, look, I would rather see him shatter that record than get hurt. I don't want to see any player get hurt because he plays my position, you know, and as a running back, you respect another great running back. But, you know, it's hard to get 2,000 yards. It's very hard. It's, a lot has to go perfect. You can't get hurt. You know, you can't fall behind. You have to have the right offensive line in place. Even if you don't have a quarterback, you can't. You don't want to have to see those eight, nine-man fronts every, every game. You have to try to break the long run sometimes. I mean, like I say, it's a lot that has to go perfect, you know, to have 2,000 yards. But it's possible. I mean, it's possible that that record could be broke one day. But I always say, and I go back to it, that rookie rushing record of mine, 1,808 yards and 20 touchdowns a rookie, that's the one that I think is going to stand, stand the test of time because you're only a rookie one time. Absolutely. And you mentioned Derrick Henry. He's emerged as one of the top running backs in the NFL. Um, who are some of the running backs that you like watching today? Well, I love watching Derrick Henry. I like watching Zeke. I, I, I like, uh, I can't think I can remember his kid's name, the kid in, in New York, um, Saquon Barkley, when he's healthy. You know, I, the thing about, when I think of Saquon Barkley, he's such a talent. I saw him when he was in college. I say, man, I say the only thing about him is he's going to a bad football team and he's mm -hmm. going to get hurt. And I hate and, you know, you hate to put that out there, but you just saw it coming. Such a great talent, uh, but no help. 
to me, those are my three guys. You know, I love watching Derrick Henry when he's playing because he's big. He's like me. He's a big back. I, I'm, I'm big on the big backs. Uh, so, you know, but they don't run the football like we used to. So, like I say, only one team run the football like that. You see the Cowboys running kind of like that and the Tennessee Titans. And that's interesting. This is actually going to be my last question before I let you go. And you kind of alluded to this is, um, you know, what's the biggest difference that you notice with the running backs today compared to um, when you were playing in the 80s and 90s? Is the, and you've, you've said it, you, um, there's not as much running of the football as there um, was in the past. But what's the biggest difference that you've seen in running backs uh, today? And One thing I see, I, the, 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 the running backs don't want to run the football as much. They yeah. don't want to run the ball 20 times this week, 25 times next week, 30 times. I mean. I wanted it. I mean, if they called it, I, I had no problem. I had no problem doing it. I think that's one of the big things. And, you know, they want to throw the football. No, they don't. The, the league doesn't want to see a 17-10, 7-3 game, you know, 14-17. They want a 45-42, a 51-51 shootout. You know, you can't, you, can, you can't touch the receiver. You can't touch the quarterback. So um, I think those are just some of the changes. And, you know, for the running game, you're going to always run the football. I mean, and, and I, I believe, believe you will always be able to run the football. I, I, I just told uh, someone this earlier. I talked to Lawrence Taylor and Bruce Smith about it. And I said, let me ask you a question. What if you didn't run the football at all? Not one. They said, and they cut me off. Not one run. Mm-hmm. Like no runs. They said, oh, say, oh, man, we'd love it. We would, we would love it. I mean, that, that would be a defensive player's dream. I think that people kind of get confused and think that you want to throw the football all the time. But guys on defense, they do not want to see a running football team. You got that right. Well, Eric, I, I really enjoyed my time with you. Thank you so much for uh, your time today and, and good luck on everything. Thank you very much. Oh, of course. And hey, guys, thank you so much for joining us. And for more on Eric and all your favorite sports stars, be sure to keep it locked right here on popculture.com.